It was last week that former Aurora police officer Francine Martinez was sentenced to six months of house arrest for failing to intervene during a violent arrest by a fellow officer. Well, that made her the first officer to be convicted at trial under law. The law passed in 2020 in the wake of the George Floyd murder. Well, let's talk about it now with our Nine News legal expert, Whitney Trailer. Let's talk about the legal requirements under the police accountability bill. In other words, walk us through what Francine Martinez did do, didn't do, and what's expected right. of officers. Well, and that actually, the question raises a good point, which is part of her defense on the failure to intervene because this was a law passed by the legislature and it said that law enforcement has a duty to intervene when there's a use of force and to report it. And here, so the question is, and this was actually something that they filed a motion for during the, during the case, was the failure to intervene is not defined anywhere. And so that was essentially part of her defense, but they're saying this was unconstitutionally vague and, and they lost on that motion. Common sense though, let's, let's, cause I know everyone wants to get, talk about legal technicalities. Common right. sense, if we've seen, and we have seen the video of that arrest, there was a failure to intervene. The question was, you know, it wouldn't have been easy to intervene. Right. But that failure to intervene was something that I think common sense would tell you was taking place right then and there. The body cam in that regard, I think, speaks for itself. But part of her defense, Officer Martinez, was when there is a deadly force being used in a situation trying to bring somebody into custody, you can then use a chokehold. But in the report that she filed a few days later, she didn't report that either of them felt that their life were, was in danger. So that's sort of a weak argument. She also testified that he had his hand on, on the neck for maybe five seconds and she, she tapped his arm or whatever. Turns out it was 39 seconds and the whole thing lasted three minutes. So she had some defenses, but I, I'm with you the, the, when, when the, the legal argument is, well, what's the technical definition of a duty to intervene? But as people watch the video, they can say there were plenty of opportunities to say that's enough or back up or, or say anything. And she was the first, a woman in this case, charged in this case, and that moved forward, so we followed it closely. But the other officer, he's also facing charges. Right, and he's facing first degree assault, second degree assault, uh, with a deadly weapon, felony menacing, official misconduct. He, he's facing a number of, of charges and he's scheduled for trial in November. Does this case start to define failure to intervene as we go forward? Does each case that we will see of this yeah. start to, to set up that, that you know, precedence, if you will? That's a great question. That's exactly how our system works, is that that's common law, the Latin term is stare decisis, judge-made law, case law precedent. That's how it works. The legislature, they can't define every potential situation that's going to come up. So they say failure to intervene creates this. Then you go to trial and you have these facts now attached to the law. And then when it gets appealed and they say, yes, this was a failure to intervene, then you start to develop that body of Does law. Does it also develop the sentencing length? Because she got six months of house arrest, which yes. is a lighter sentence than, than prosecutors were looking for. And they, they have to comply with the sentencing guidelines. And so here that she could have gotten anywhere from probation up to 18 months in jail. And so the sentence was actually six months in jail, but she could serve it under house arrest. So in that regard, Yes, it is also uh, like a template. Here's what happened in this situation. We all saw it. Here's the, uh, the, the sentence. So I think it will have precedential value both legally as we shape the law, but also in officer conduct because now they're going to look at this and say, okay, th th there was an opportunity to intervene, use this as training. Uh, we now know what we're on the hook for. You see it as in training and changing a lot of things and you hope it's the last that you see of this, but most likely not. We see these body camera videos coming out. Right. Learn. And and on the, on the other side of the coin, some folks are saying, well, this is going to have a chilling effect because officers are going to say, now we're on the hook for every Everything. possible thing and lack of thing and and that may be true there may be some cases that are along the line this one I think was was very excessive was not a close call if you will well it's something to talk about that's for sure yeah. thanks for joining us as always sure, and news legal analyst Whitney trailer all right